hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm adi if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified every time i post a new video so today's case is a pretty frustrating one it's just so crazy that with so much evidence and with how much technology we have nowadays that after almost eight years this case is still unsolved and it's just sad that there has been no justice for Angie Barlow and up to this day her mom still continues to fight for her daughter and for justice to be made but before we get into the details of the case let's talk a little bit about Angie so Angie Gianna Barlow was born on August 21st, 1993 in Denver, Colorado. She is the daughter of Christina and Stephen Barlow. Christina described her daughter as being a very dependable, loyal, free-spirited, and independent person. She would do anything for anybody, and Angie had a mind of her own, and once her mind was made up, she would not change it. Angie loved her family and friends, especially her three younger sisters, Wendy, Jesse, and Sarima. They were her world, and so was her little dog, Pablo. She definitely lived every day like it was her last. She had moved from Muncie, Indiana, where her family lived to Indianapolis, and she lived with her best friend, Mona. They had been best friends for 11 years, so they pretty much considered themselves sisters at that point. Angie was a dancer at local clubs in the area and she would occasionally do private parties at people's homes even though she really didn't like doing those but when she did she tried to be very careful and on October of 2016 Angie got a text from an unknown number that did not identify themselves asking if she did private parties she initially hesitated about it because she didn't really like to do private parties so she ignored the text message so then two weeks later angie got the same text again but this time it so happened that she had just come back from a trip uh, to miami and she was a little low on funds so she decided why not and she decided to take up the offer and do the private party her best friend mona told Angie that she had a bad feeling about this and asked her not to do the party but Angie being Angie her mind was made up so she was going to do it anyway the anonymous woman told Angie that she wanted to set up a private party for her husband for their anniversary on the evening of October 26, 2016. And she asked Angie if she had anything black or red so that her and Angie could match. Finally, the night of the private party is here and Angie receives a text from this anonymous woman with the address and the gate code for the apartments. The apartments were the landmark apartments in Indianapolis and Angie arrived there shortly after 11 p.m. that night. Now Angie did what she normally would do and she took a screenshot and sent it to her best friend Mona and texted her doing a private party at this address just in case I go missing lol. So Angie went into the apartment complex and she got ready in the restroom and she took a snapchat at 11.45 of her smiling, everything seemed to be okay. But unfortunately this would be the last time Angie was seen and be heard from again. So the next day when Angie didn't come home, obviously Mona was very concerned. This was not like Angie to not let anybody know where she was so uh, Mona immediately contacted Christina, Angie's mother. So obviously both Mona and Christina immediately knew that something was wrong. Angie's mom, Christina, called Angie. She left her text messages. She contacted her via social media, but she didn't hear back from her. So uh, Christina and her husband drove from Muncie to Indianapolis to look for their daughter. So when Christina and her husband got to Indianapolis, it was very clear that Angie had not come home because her dog had gone without food or water and Angie loved her dog and she would never allow that to happen. So Christina immediately started calling every hospital, every jail. She even contacted a morgue, which she said was so hard to do but there was no sign of her daughter 
So meanwhile, Mona headed over to the address that Angie had sent her on that screenshot the night before. She tried the gate code, but it didn't work. So she decided to jump over the gate. She just basically sent me a screenshot saying this is the location where I'm going to be at. Mona headed straight to the exact apartment that Angie said she was going to be at, but nobody was there. In fact, uh, Mona said that the apartment was cleaned out as if somebody had just moved out, so she immediately had a really bad feeling about it. So after this discovery, Christina and Mona headed over to the Indianapolis Police Department to file a missing persons report. Now the detective that they filed this report with filed the report and left it on his desk and he actually went on vacation for four days so during these four days nobody was looking for angie which we all know that the first 48 hours are very crucial when somebody is missing so her family took action they posted flyers they conducted searches they went on social media they did anything they could to spread the word and try to find angie Angie's mother says she kept telling herself that she's fine, she's going to pop up. But deep down, she knew something was wrong because this wasn't like Angie. So when the police finally started investigating, they did find surveillance footage showing Angie's car going into the apartment complex. They also found footage of Angie's car leaving the apartment complex at 3.30, followed by a second vehicle like right behind Angie so obviously it looked like they were leaving together and even though on the footage the police was not able to identify the driver or the passenger on the second vehicle they were able to pull the plates the police traced back to a woman named Raven Miller and Raven Miller was Baron McCullough girlfriend and that's going to be important later on so Angie's mother, Christina, called Raven and asked her if she knew where her daughter Angie was, but Raven said she didn't know anybody by the name Angie. So Christina thought that maybe Angie had used her stage name, Diamond, so she asked her if she knew where Diamond was, and Raven said, oh yeah, she was here last night, but she left around 3 a.m. after some dude called her. Now, Angie actually knew this couple. She had worked with raven before and she and raven actually didn't get along very well there was some tension there because angie had actually had a thing with baron in the past so the police finally discovered that the host of this private party were raven and baron and clearly raven never told angie that they were the host of the party because they didn't get along and obviously Angie would have never agreed to do this private party had she known it was Raven and Baron. So that immediately raised suspicion for the police. Now the police believed that there could very likely be a third person involved because they do not believe that had Raven or Baron opened the door, Angie would have just very comfortably gone inside the apartment and remember she went inside she got ready in the restroom she even took that snapchat looking very happy and like everything was fine so the police d definitely believed that there could have been a third person that answered the door for angie so the police questioned raven and baron and according to them they agreed that Angie was there, but she left with somebody around 3 a.m. and they stayed at the apartment complex. But obviously, according to surveillance footage, they knew that that wasn't true. So at that point, Raven and Baron stopped talking. And unfortunately, the police didn't feel they had enough to charge them with anything. So they had no other choice but to let them go. They were starting to be questioned about the vehicles and the video. They became very vague as far as what had happened after that. And very, and I mean very shortly after that, both Raven and Baron moved from Indianapolis to Phoenix, Arizona. So then 12 days after Angie went missing, her car was finally found. It was found about eight miles from the apartment complex where she was last seen. Her car was very badly damaged. There were marks on the exterior of the car, on the windows, 
but there was no sign of Angie. Now there were DNA swabs taken from a liquid substance that was found inside her car and there's also reports that there was some blood found inside not a significant amount but there was some blood found inside her car so then a few months after angie's disappearance um about eight thousand dollars were withdrawn from her grandmother's account and the police wondered if this could be in any way connected to angie's disappearance so the police ultimately did arrest four people in connections with the fraud committed to her grandmother but they didn't find anything that linked the fraud to angie's disappearance so months have gone by now and nothing is happening everything is leading them to a dead end until january angie's mom got a call from that same number that had contacted angie about the private party being raven miller and raven claimed that her and angie had talked that night that she went missing and christina asked her what they talked about and raven's response was oh you want to know what her last words were and at that moment christina immediately knew that they had done something to her daughter angie's family never stopped looking for her they kept posting flyers keeping up with social media they even posted a reward but nothing was happening then eight months after angie's disappearance a tip finally came in a source who was anonymous called in to report the location of a young female's remains. Now this house had been previously abandoned, but somebody had just recently moved in and coincidentally, one of Barron's family members had lived there previously. Now, the way that Christina found out about this tip is just so heartbreaking. She actually was at the dentist's office and her phone just kept ringing she got numerous text messages and calls from reporters asking her how she felt that they were now digging for her daughter oh my god i can't i can't even imagine having to find out that way so obviously christina immediately calls the detective to ask him he explained that this was not how she was supposed to find out but that they had gotten a tip about where angie was buried and the next day she receives a phone call from the detective asking christina to come in and identify the body he was pretty certain that it was angie they had found christina obviously still held on to hope she did not want to believe that her baby girl was gone but sadly when christina saw the photos she was immediately able to identify her daughter through her tattoos, which obviously she knew very well. Well, it is devastating news for a family from Muncie. The body found this week on the city's north side is 23-year-old Angie Barlow. She's from Muncie, and she disappeared months ago. Her family holding out hope that she might still be alive and out there somewhere. But now their family is sharing grief. Naomi Peskovitz is here with what the family is hoping comes out of this case. It's just awful news awful devastating really hard for them to understand even though they did have some clues early on earlier this week that the body might belong to their missing sweet angie they really didn't know until yesterday they were holding out hope that maybe it wasn't her but their fears were confirmed after an autopsy angie's mother looked through police photos from the coroner's office pictures of angie's tattoos and she knew it was her daughter the 23 year old was a dancer and went missing last october after a party on harcourt road Right before the party where she was working, she texted friends the address where she was dancing, writing, in case I go missing. It's something her mother says she always did as a precaution. Since then, the family has not given up on looking for her. They've had fundraisers for an award. They've posted flyers, even launched a website. And though that search is now over, the pain lingers for Angie's family. It's very devastating. Um, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it gives you closure. Um, that's not the closure you want. It's, it's not. You don't want that kind of closure. The closure you want is to bring your little girl home safe. Angie's mom now wears that small pendant around her neck with the last photo of Angie and her younger sister. It's a reminder of what they had, but also what they've lost. And now that they found her, the case still is far from over because no one's been arrested. We're going to tell you more about the investigation coming up and really what her family is hoping happens next. Because finding the body is one thing, but they still don't know why she disappeared or how. Yeah, well, or what was the cause of death. Right. Either.
Now, the coroner's office did not release a cause of death due to the ongoing investigation. They still very much believe that Raven and Barron are involved in persons of interest. They also still do believe that there was a third person involved. But unfortunately, even with the anonymous tip and everything else they have, there still has yet to be an arrest made. Now, here we are almost eight years later, and Angie's mom, Christina, still continues to fight for justice for her daughter. Well, marks seven years since the remains of 23-year-old Angie Barlow was found. Investigators say someone murdered Barlow in October of 2016, then buried her in the backyard of a home on the northeast side. Surveillance video shows a black sedan following Barlow's car as she left a party. Her car was later found badly damaged. Now, police still have not made any arrests in this case. If, if you know something or you see something or you hear something, you say something. They, you know, things can't happen unless people come forward. And the more people sit back and not do anything, the more homicides that's committed. A person of interest was recently arrested in Hancock County on unrelated drug charges. Barlow's mother tells us police are now trying to get the FBI involved in the case. And as true crime consumers, obviously, if there's anything we can do to help too. So if you have any information, you can contact the Justice for Angie Barlow Facebook page. Or you can contact Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS or the lead detective Jose Torres by calling him at 317-327-3741. Now, like I said, this case is very frustrating and it just saddens me that here we are almost eight years later and Angie's family has not gotten justice. I can't even begin to imagine the frustration her family feels and I really do hope that Angie gets justice one day. So that's all I have for today, guys. What are your thoughts? Um, why do you think that there still hasn't been an arrest made? And make sure to be kind in the comments as always. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.